Good evening everyone and a very, very, very Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, I do have a little special gift for everyone who watches this show. Uh, it is me wearing the most ridiculous jumper that has been stolen from some poor grandma's closet and has ended up in a charity shop where I bought it solely for the purpose of entertaining anyone who sees me wear it. So this is my wonderful Christmas jumper for today. How obscenely horrible is this? It actually has sparkles in it. I have I have print down my arms. I could just stand like that and actually become a whole scene of a nice festive Christmas house. So uh, that's my Christmas present to you all. Please laugh. Please enjoy it. Please freeze frame it. Anything you feel is necessary. Uh, and I do hope you've all got everything you wanted. Uh, and if that includes plenty of beer, then that is certainly a good thing. Uh, I've got a few little things to talk to you about today. Um, one is one of my favourite little presents that I got. Um, I've read this before, strangely enough, but I've never actually had it in print. I borrowed it from a friend of mine. This is uh, IPA um, by Mitch Steele. Uh, Brewing techniques, recipes, and the evolution of, I should say. Uh, Mitch Steele, one of the guys who set up uh, Stone Brewing Company out in uh, California. Uh, if you've ever tried Stone Beers, you'll know they are pretty darned amazing. Um, their IPAs, in particular, what they're known for. And it's such an interesting read about the history of and the evolution of the beer and styles. My favourite little things that they talk about is the potential that Brettanomyces um, yeast was, or wild, wild yeast Brettanomyces was used in uh, the oak barrels that they transported IPAs across to India in, which is why they were always described as being very dry and having very low final gravities and that sort of thing. It's just a fascinating book. I really recommend you go out and read it, and I'm extremely thrilled that I now have a proper copy that I can just reference and keep to myself. Um, the other thing is, I'm going to give you a history lesson because today's beer. As it is Christmas, it's going to be a little bit of a festive one. Uh, I've got one from my trips into Iceland last year. This is Giljagur by uh, the Borg Brughus, um, which is actually, strange enough, owned by um, the Eki Skala Grimson Brewery, uh, which produces the main lager called Guk, uh, which means gold in Icelandic. Uh, and it's the major macro mass produced lager that they have up there. But in the strangest way, because Iceland's only got a population of, of just over 300,000 about the population of the city of Hull, next door to where I live, um, you know, the, the brewery is actually tiny and they have this place called the Borga Brugus inside of it, which is a traditional, I think it's five barrel, it might be ten barrel, plant where they produce, where they let the breweries kind of go a bit nuts and produce whatever they want to produce. So as you can tell, this one is Giliga and this is number 14 in the row. They number all the beers, the new ones they produce. I think they produce a special one every year. This is number 14. Uh, Giliugur is one of the Yule Lads. Uh, the Yule Lads are 13 Father Christmases. That's 13 Father Christmases that the Icelandics have. Uh, Giliugur in particular, uh, I have, I have, there's a little ditty about him which I brought the translation for. Um, the translation is not very good, but it goes something like this. Giliugur was another with his grey head. He crawled down from the canyon and shot in a cow shed. He hid in stalls, foam and steel, or barn women had barn with a human voice. So the last sentence there is not very really good, but essentially, this guy, Giliugo, comes down from the mountains, he'll hide in your cow shed and he'll steal your milk. Uh, so he's not a very nice guy, the Yule lads are a bit cheeky. And there's 13 of them, and they come kind of 13 nights before Christmas and stay till just afterwards. So uh, Giliugo comes down, strange enough, on the 13th of December and leaves on Boxing Day. So this is me seeing him out. Uh, so this is Barley Wine. Uh, and I believe this one uses English and American hops in it and also uses three different strains of yeast uh, to bump it up to uh, the 10% alcohol by volume that's in it. Uh, I had this when I was out in Iceland last year and last year it was already a, it might have been a year, I think it was a year old already, it was done for 2000. 2011's uh, Christmas period so this one is has a good couple of years on it, this, uh, this is uh, been aged for two years now. Um, been keeping very good hands in it. I stole this one when I was on a brewery tour. They gave us free samples of it, and there was one free on the table because it was such strong beer that most people were like, oh, I can't drink that, and I was like, yes, I can drink that. So I took it. Um, so yeah, uh, I had a little description on here. Yeah, three different types of yeast and British and American hops on it as well. So should be quite cool. Um, so without further ado, let's crack it open. Now I've had a series of foamers recently, so I'm going to do this one over the bed over here. Oi. But we're okay with this one. Just a nice little pop fizz with this fellow. Uh, I'm really excited to try this. I, I love Icelandic beers. Uh, the Einstock, 
Um, brewery was is amazing. Do great beers. The Borg Brew Cruise. I've had this one before. Um, I, I remember I have fond memories of it, and I tried the Ulfu, which is an IPA, and the Beato, which I think is just a, an amber ale. I think, or was it? No, I think I tried October, which is the the Mars and beer when I was out there too. Uh, this fellow is bottle conditioned, so um, there might be a might be quite hazy as well, but that's okay. Uh, and the I tried the Overshots Freya as well when I was out there. I didn't manage to get my hands on lava, which is the one that everyone talks about. They're kind of smoked porter, uh, but I remember I remember Freya, the, the blonde ale, being absolutely magnificent as well. So there you have it. This is a lovely, lovely deep chestnuty sort of colour. Like I said, it's bottle conditioned, and um, I've tried not to disturb the sediment, but I'm useless at pouring anyway. So it is nice and cloudy. There is a lovely, lovely, lovely tiny, really thick. A uh, little head there, just about a finger, and it's beautiful. That's definitely lacing and it's sticking around as well. In fact, it's it's, it's lacing beautifully. It's gorgeous lacing on that. Um, so let's get a nose in there and get a good old smell. Oh heck! Oh, you know what? Despite two years, two years worth of age on this, that is actually really hoppy. There's like a creamy, creamy. Uh, Citrus flavours. I can almost get maybe a little bit. Well, no, it is really grapefruity and piney actually. It might be a barley wine, but the, the aroma on this is is really. Ugh, it's pungent. It's like marmalade. It's like smelling marmalade. Oh, we're on some marmalade now. I've, I've just had the massive feast of, of Christmas dinner and I'm, and I'm still hungry, and that, that says something. I'm definitely going to go and try some more food, I think. But yeah, marmalade actually. It's, it's marmalade and toast. And it's like that, a little bit of sweet maltiness in the back nose of it. Oh, it smells like breakfast. It smells like breakfast. Oh, it does, it does smell really nice. Okay, without further ado, let's get our chops and then give it a try. Cheers, everybody, and a very Merry Christmas. Mm. Oh, it's so smooth. Oh, it's, it's so smooth. The body on this is fantastic. It is so chunky. It is, it's like drinking golden syrup or something like that. It's just magnificent. And there's this wonderful effervescence on the tongue. Perfect level of fizziness, almost champagne esque, but without the kind of like the harsh fizziness it has. There's loads of tons of tiny little bubbles popping across the tongue. Closest thing I can say, in terms of body and mouth feel that I've had to this, it was probably that Westy 12 that we cracked open uh, not so long ago. The mouth feel on this is, is just sublime, sublime. I, I couldn't honestly tell you if it's the same as it was last year. Um, I, I think I'd already had quite a few drinks when we were around the tour there, but uh, I don't know whether it's ageing or not, but if this is what ageing beer does to it, smooths it, rounds it out, which I believe is what it does, then uh, everyone please age your beers. If you have if you have those beers that can be aged, age them because the mouthfeel is fantastic and velvety smooth. In terms of flavour, there's this super complex malt flavour. It is like sugar candy sweetness and then a bit of more kind of caramel and toffee where you get a little bit of that darker sugar flavours and then it kind of develops into a bit more molasses or crystal malt sort of flavours and it's magnificent, a really complex level of malt flavours and, and they are quite dominant in this but without being overpowering. I'm getting quite a bit of bread in it as well, like a bready malt flavour, maybe biscuity. Uh, but then after that you get that nice rush and it's sweet and it's unctuous and the mouth feels brilliant. Then there's just this hint of bitterness down the, the centre of your tongue and then you just get that creamy citrus marmalade flavour across your tongue. It's so lovely. It really is gorgeous. It's the smile on my face. I, I am really glad that I saved this and I didn't just kind of blow it when we first started doing reviews on, this, on, the, on the channel because it's just, oh, it's magnificent. It's the perfect beer to be having on a night like this. I just need to like photoshop in a crapping fire behind me and perhaps a pipe and then I think I'll be an extremely happy young gentleman. Maybe a cigar. I prefer cigars. Mm. It's just the tiniest hint of alcohol on the palate as well, but still very reserved and it just about warms the stomach. 
but just retains this this superb drinkability, a dangerously superb drinkability, uh, and I just can't seem to fault this. This is just it's it's absolutely absolutely lovely. Um, <laughs> the only big disappointment with this beer is I don't think this is produced anymore. I I know this will probably be the last beer I will ever see. Uh, because it, it just stays, uh, they don't uh, deliver outside of Iceland. So the only way that people will probably get their hands on this is if you do ever head out to Iceland, please go on their little tour of the brew house. It is great, it's good fun. You get to try Brennevin, the the kind of um, aniseedy schnapps that's um, so ubiquitous in, in Iceland. You'll get to try the kind of mass produced lagers, you'll get to try the Ulfur and the Beato. Um, I got to try the October, which was a Mars and beer. Uh, God, what else was there? Anyway, but I got to try a Gully Girl as well, and they might have some still left in their stock rooms. They may be producing this again, I, I wouldn't know unless I went out there. But, <coughs> it's just so, so lovely. Best Christmas present I've ever given myself, I think. Um, so please like, favourite, comment, subscribe, all the usual jazz, spread the word about these amazing beers from the Borg Brokers and also Icelandic beers in general. We've had a couple of, well, I do still have a couple of uh, Einstock beers to try. Um, I think we had the Whit beer, or did we have the Toasted Porter earlier on in the review series? That was fantastic as well. And the Overshot Brokers has got itself a bit of reputation with a lot of smoked porter, but I'd also recommend you try their Freya as well. That was uh, fantastic when I tried it at least. So spread the world about Icelandic beers. Do not be afraid if you see a craft brewery from a country that you will probably not think would do craft beer because you're probably going to find something interesting. And um, this is just a testament to beer travelling. Anywhere you go, you see a brewery, especially a microbrewery, go and do the tour, go have a wander around because you'll be damn surprised what you can find sometimes. So a very Merry Christmas to you all. I really do hope you get all the presents you wanted. I'm going away. Um, day after tomorrow, we are heading out to Boston, Massachusetts, and also uh, Vermont as well. I'll be doing a whole load of videos. As you can probably tell, in Boston there are several, I don't know, you know, there's a few breweries there that people may, have, may or may not have heard of, uh, and Vermont as well, there's a few breweries there that you may or may not have heard of. And if you haven't heard of the ones in Vermont, then you really need to do hear about the ones in Vermont. Um, so. If I don't do a uh, quick video before I leave, this is cheers for the new year as well, and I shall see you all on the flip side.